Hello guys, what's up? This is Shirt Talking. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is about Romance in Saga Reuniverse. We will be talking about Out of Farming on episode 11. I made a video about episode 10 when I was uh, talking about treasure maps. And I kind of explain a lot of stages that you can do out of farming, safe out of farm without having to have a chance of losing and wasting stamina. But here on episode 11, that's not exactly as simple. We were talking about... Uh, Episode 10, uh, this stage here was the best one to farm, so you should stick on this stage too, your characters have like at least close to 700 HP, I suggest you get a little more than that, and 54 um, on status is the cap, but you can stop on 50, if you get at least to 50 here with your characters, in 700, you are kinda ready for episode 11. Well, it still depends on your formations, the characters that you're using, because you need synergy when you're playing this game. But stay here, farm the stage. I want to release a video specifically about stage, because it's one you only need, like, two or three specific slash damage dealers, and the other characters can be here just for experience and also for status gains. Let's not, not talk about episode 10. This video is about episode 11. And there's a lot of stages here that can be very dangerous, like I just said. I didn't find any stage here that was particularly safe besides one. The enemies are usually weak against lightning. We don't have many sources of lightning in the game yet. They are weak to blunt. We have lots of sources of blunt. That's a good thing. And they are also weak against cold. We don't have many sources of cold. And this is why we are not ready to auto-farm this Besides one stage. It's not any stage from the first list. It's on stage from this second list here. 11.2.1. It's called Hidden Hamlet Revisited. This stage is super uh, good to farm. Not only because of the easiness of the stage. But it can also drop two weapons instead of just one. It's a, a rifle. That's a gun. And the other one is a club. And, well... Sophia uses clubs, you need a light club. And then you can simply farm this lots of times, you may even find out a uh, light plus version of this club, so her healings will be even better. For guns, um, if you are keeping up with the game, you probably soon a gun user already, and this weapon here is the best one available to episode 11. So, okay, um, we have to talk about the stage, I want to show you some strategies that work here. Like I said, the enemies here are weak against Blunt, Cold and Lightning. Because Blunt is the easiest source of, of characters right now, you should focus on that. Actually, Gunners do Blunt damage, and Emilia was a very strong character that just got released, and she is part of my strategies trying to beat those stages without using too many strong characters. I can carry two characters with my strategies, but sometimes using four is better, so you can just bring one that is not so strong. Like this formation here, I am betting on Sophia Yundin. Yundin is not healing on this strategy here, she is using Squall. Because Squall is a, uh, a skill that deals AoE damage, AoE cold damage. My Yundin is super invested, she's very close to the cap now. When I started running this, she wasn't. So you see, she gets like, um, right now she has 65 intelligence, that's a lot, that's her cap actually. And uh, I also have all the characters very strong now, because I have been running this for at least one whole day, trying to get these characters a little stronger. And I'm uh, using equipment that's also uh, very invested. I am using maxed weapons and uh, also max upgraded equipments with my Azami. Then you can see uh, I'm using also uh, S and only my Sophia is still wearing a Nay equipment, because we don't have many. Yundin is using this S Tardis robe that you can get by... Forest of Mystery, uh, it's a new equipment that you can get there, there's 4 intelligence to gain from here, also some resistance against other stuff. You have to try to resist some damage, the enemies will do uh, blunt damage as well, they can also do slash damage, it's a little danger, there's no many uh, strategies that will keep you super safe, even my Amelia using some very strong equipment like the Hydra Leather, she's also using um, Fluffy HUD, she doesn't have so bad endurance and even then she can die by one hit depending on the enemy uh, usually it takes a, uh, at least one normal attack before she can be one shot but let's just go straight to the the, the formation as well divine wall is the one that i'm using because i have immediate if you don't have immediate you should be using a different strategy like speculation or happy string i recommend you using happy string if you have your uh 
SS Yunzin. I suggested you guys that keep up with my channel to summon for this girl. She's super strong here, one of the best resources. If you are playing safe, you can drop Squall and just get healing water instead, so that she can revive someone that just died. But SS Hyundin deals so much damage with Ice Javelins, it's super, super high. You can also try to uh, choose, instead of Ice Javelins, to use another skill from, from Inheritance. Diamond Dust is super strong as well. If you are not strong enough to clear the first wave, you can start by using Diamond Dust if you awaken it. But Squall is already very strong for me, I can kill those enemies very easily. Also, there's another reason why the stage is super easy, and well, I need to enter there. Let's do at least one run and we talk about the other options that we have. Uh, let me turn off full power auto and try to explain why this stage is the best one. You see the first enemy here is called Veno Marlin. These enemies are fish, they are weak to the same things. All enemies here are weak to the same stuff. Some can be stunned, some can be paralyzed. That are uh, strategies that you can also use that rely on paralyze. But I'm not uh, sticking with it because I just want to finish as fast as possible. So Venom Marlin has one skill that is very dangerous called Barrel Pounce. But because Venom Marlin has a very low status, this does like less than 200 damage. But uh, this shark here, no. He also has access to the same skill and his version can do upwards of 2,000 if you are bringing a weak character. If you are bringing a character that can resist Slash, then you will probably uh, receive like 600 damage from this Feral Pounce and it's the only attack that can be dangerous in my opinion. Also, uh, there is this attack called Fissure Strike and Fissure Strike can attack more than one character from your group depending if they are aligned on a line. Yes, and the other attacks are not dangerous at all. So. Only this enemy is dangerous, that's why uh, I'm using Azami. I inherited a uh, submission, but I uh, start by using Punishing Paw, it's fully awakened, she can use on first turn. I will just uh, explain what I do here and then I will turn full auto. Sophia is better if you inherit Seismic Strike from her uh, Christmas version, because she can open with a blunt damage that is AoE. But if you don't have, you can also just use Wildfire to contribute to a little more damage to Q those enemies if your Yunzin cannot. Uh, well, so if you don't have Yunzin, we'll talk about other strategy. Okay, so she will be using Squall, and Emilia is the queen of the strategy. She always uses Sweet Trap against the, the Shark, because she uh, has lower agility. This formation here increases the dexterity from the two backline units, and increases um, some agility and endurance to the frontline characters. The problem is just that they get also increased aggro, and then your healers are taking more hits. They have more chances of being attacked. And this, this central unit here also gets more uh, endurance. So this is why Azam is here. So, okay, uh, I already showed everything I do. Thelma is here just to get status. You don't need to do anything with your 50 character here. So, full power auto. Let's just watch what we happen. Well. Punishing Paw. You got a combo here. You see, 20k damage with my Emilia. With a combo. Without a combo, she does 18k. She will be even uh, stronger in the future. This enemy here is new. It does, is not as uh, strong as the Shark, in my opinion. And you see, Emilia will just use a normal attack. And I'll explain why she did a normal attack. Because she doesn't have any uh, BP to use her AoE attack yet. Let me just turn off full auto so you can at least uh, see what happens now. It's just that, well, Azami will just use submission now against this enemy. This enemy has way more HP than the other enemies. And uh, Sophia will either use Wildfire or Bone Crusher. She will probably use Wildfire. Undine will use Ice Javelins. And here you see uh, Emilia will not be using Bound Shot. That is because uh, my random shot is 7 BP on Nauto. And she has 7 BP. That helps killing. The, the enemies on the back lines. If you are not uh, bringing Yunjin, Emilia can help you by doing this. That also happens because, say, Emilia used Sweet Trap, but she didn't kill the enemy. Then Azami killed the enemy. That means that on this round, Emilia will also have a uh, random shot available on the first turn against this wave. So let's just click full power auto again to see what happens. You see, um, the fish is totally dead. 
and uh, my immediately need to attack. Sometimes she will need to attack because um, uh, sometimes we cannot get combos. The combos increase the damage. Remember, Selma barely has any status here. In my opinion, uh, you can drop a Zami and just use any other type of blunt damage dealer. Or even um, if you don't have a very strong blunt damage dealer, but you have Ocelus, you can just place Ocelus on the place where a Zami is and it will still work super fine. Okay, this is what uh, I do in my runs. These runs are usually in one minute and some seconds. And it's super fast for me. Okay, so this is the safest strategy in my opinion. I uh, never fail with this one. But there are one that is even safer. You just have to switch between, uh, say, you can remove a zombie. And then just get White Rose in her place. I don't recommend removing Sophia. Because when Sophia dies, she heals. That is super good. And she also can use Bone Crusher. That is strong against the enemies. You indeed, it's super strong. You can just remove a Zami and get White Rose. Problem is that White Rose will be on the front lines. And in that case, you can just change formation and get um, White Rose here. Just switch out. Leave Sophia in the middle because the, the middle gets more endurance. And then if she dies, she will heal your, your squad. Okay, let me just get back here. So this is another strategy. And besides this one, maybe you don't have a media. If you don't have a media, you can use a different uh, strategy. Let me see here. This is strategy here. You can see that lots of characters here are not perfect. Cat is very close to you, but then target and Alkaiser are very weak. You can also just run uh, this strategy here and it will work super fine. Okay, so I will do full auto. Because there's no many need of explanation, I think. Uh, the good thing is that we are using Cat and Azami. Two Punishing Palm will always kill the first enemies. And by having submission with some of your uh, martial artists, you will also decrease the incoming damage for the shark. Okay. It's also good when Azami uh, doesn't need to attack on the, <laughs> the second turn. Because she has submission against the fish. Giant fish. Um, the problem is more that uh, if you don't bring an AoE uh, mage that, or maybe someone like Ocelus, you can bring Ocelus here as well and make a mix. Uh, the, the small fishes will take time to die. Your squad will focus before on killing the giant fish and then they will kill the small fishes later. See, just like what is happening now. <laughs> but if you have Teacher Yundin, that is super easy. But uh, this strategy is more for those that don't have her. And also, I'm using submission with my Azami. You need to inherit that from either the Christmas Azami on, or the future Summer Azami also has submission. We finally have lots of sources of submission, so I know uh, you have plenty of options to try to defeat this stage. So this strategy has been super safe for me. Um, even if Sophia dies, she heals the squad. And then even then, uh, I don't think you really need White Rose here. But if you want to be even safer, just bring White Rose. Yeah, I, I think that this formation doesn't have many space to just uh, bring a character that don't do anything like I did on the past formation. Selma there doesn't do anything, but here all characters contribute just even if for just a little damage. Okay. So in order to finish this topic, I just want to talk about how I plan on doing things on the future. I want to remove Azami from this formation because I want to bring two characters that can be leveled up 
It kind of depends on the, the strength of your these characters. I think they need at least uh, 4,000 CP, maybe 5,000 CP. You can still get 5,000 CP by playing uh, 4.1.5 on Harry Hard. Shadow Chains is still enough to get you to there. Uh, and then just skip all the farming uh, up to this point or episode 10 point. And then just have like this formation where I can bring two characters just to train. And then uh, if I manage to remove Azami, I need to bring Sophia with... Uh, Seismic Strike, but my Seismic Strike is still not awakening because she can help on turn 1 damage to kill the small fishes because Yundin alone cannot do that. She uh, has a Squall, but the Squall is not strong enough for now. And then we have Emilia. Emilia will always kill the Shark with her uh, skill. The Sweet Trap here. The Sweet Trap is super strong, even more if you keep increasing this rank. And then I think these three characters are enough for future farming, but not right now with the status that I have. They sometimes fail, but it's just uh, an explanation of my future plans. So guys, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe if you still haven't. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by either using the Patreon, PayPal, or PayPal buttons here on the description. And if you want to support the channel, you can use the Coffee, Patreon, or PayPal buttons on the description of the video. We we'll see each other on the next one. Bye.